Hi, I'm Walter here with the Coco ADX. I'm going to give a quick overview of the device's operation in DSA mode. I'll show you how to set up tests and how to acquire data. After powering up the analyzer, users are presented with the startup screen. This is the startup screen in DSA mode. It shows your recent projects and favorite projects. Your startup screen will look different if your Coco has not been configured to start up in DSA mode. You can press F6 to switch working modes. Press F2 to open the analysis menu. Here you can choose from a list of analysis groups. Each of these analysis groups contains multiple application-specific programs. These software programs are referred to as CSAs, which stands for Configurable Signal Analysis. This refers to the high level of configurability within these programs. The analysis menu is the main interface for managing your CSAs. It's where you go to start new tests or resume previous tests. This menu allows you to save, delete, or rename CSAs. Press OK to open the CSA. This is the Coco ADX's main display interface. From here, you can begin recording or saving data. You can access this menu at any point by pressing the display button. The function keys at the bottom are dedicated to important menus for settings within the CSA. To select my signals for the live display, go into Trace and Window Settings. This is where you configure the display for each window. You can choose what types of signals are displayed and which channels will be displayed. Once you're done configuring your display, press the OK button. Now I'll discuss the Parameters menu and its various submenus. Press F2 to open the Parameters menu. This menu contains all the settings that govern data acquisition and analysis. First, let's set the sampling rate. Now let's configure the analysis parameters. This controls such things as averaging and block size. There's also windowing functions, frequency weighting, and overlap ratios. The options listed here in analysis parameters will vary between test types. For example, Octave Analysis offers certain parameter choices that are specific to Octave tests. Once you're done, press F6 to apply. The analyzer's input channels are configured in the input channel setup. This is the input channel interface. It's where you configure the sensitivity and input modes for your input channels. This menu is accessible from any display interface by pressing the input button. When you're done configuring the input channels, press apply to save changes. There are a few menus here that I won't cover in detail, but will be discussed in later videos. This is the output channel menu. It controls the output channel signal generator. This is the trigger setup. You can enable trigger-based acquisition and configure the various trigger parameters. This menu will be explained in a separate video. The schedule setup allows users to configure and manage automated testing schedules. The display preferences menu allows users to configure various display-related properties. These display options are application-specific. This list only applies to DSA tests. There are separate menus for saving and recording. The time stream recording setup governs how time stream signals are recorded, and the spectral save setup governs how signals are recorded. This is the time stream recording setup. Select which signals will be recorded and how the recording will be initiated. Press OK to save changes. This is the spectral save setup. Choose which signals will be saved and how they'll be saved. When you're done making changes, press OK. Now that we've configured the save and recording settings, we can begin acquiring data. Press the record button to begin recording time stream signals. Notice the status indicator at the top. You can see the file name, recording length, and remaining memory capacity. Now that it's recording data, you can freely toggle between signal displays. Press the arrow buttons to switch to adjacent windows. You can also zoom and scroll the display using the touch screen. You can add cursors by opening the F5 menu. These cursors can be moved around using the touch screen or with the arrow buttons. With the cursor still active, press the up button to add a peak cursor. Press down to remove it. To stop the recording, press the record button again. Now let's save a signal. Press the save button to initiate saving. This time the status banner only displayed for a moment. This is because it was configured to save only a single frame. This can be changed in the spectral save setup. Now let's review our signals. Press the file button to access your saved recordings and signals. Press F4 to view the selected file. The various review functions provided here will be addressed in a separate video. Press the back button to return to the previous screen. Now that we've seen all the setup menus, I will review the various shortcuts to these menus. The setup button takes you to the setup screen. The analysis button takes you to the analysis functions. The file button takes you to the file review screen. The input button takes you to the input channel setup. The display button takes you to the display view. The previous and next buttons allow you to switch traces. And the save and record buttons were previously explained. This concludes the process for setting up CSAs and acquiring data. 
This entire process is very similar in other CSAs, although some of the analysis parameters and display options may differ.